Hey, Nuka Knights, this is our second series of the night, Quanro versus Lita. Good stuff, eh? Both these guys are fantastic powerhouses, and I'd say they're both about a couple notches away from being S-Class players. I'd say one good championship under either of these guys' belts would catapult them to that position, but both are very, very good players, very aggressive, weird players. Uh, we're going to see some weird stuff today, I guarantee it from these two gentlemen and uh, yep I'd be happy with either of them in the round of 16 so I'm glad they're both playing each other for that position but uh, overall I'd say it's good to see Lita again haven't seen him since the ever OSL round of 36 which is interesting to think about lost to pure after being nuked good games those were some of the best games of the ever OSL 2009 but it's good to see Lita back uh, from a slight slump it was kind of a shame that he went into a slump in the first place because Lita's play is so innovative and so fun to watch. Same with Quanro, really. Oh, I want them both in the round of 16. Why do they have to play each other? Okay, here we go. Eye of the Storm. Except, okay, up at the 2 o'clock position, they switch the colors, and beige is Quanro scouting into the middle. And that means down at the 5 o'clock position in red is Lita. I can only imagine what we're going to see from these two guys. I I can't even fathom it, because Lita's favorite build is probably his Medic Marine with Wraith. His Wraith control is probably the best in the game. I was talking earlier about Fantasy's uh, Vulture control being the best, but when I think of Wraiths, I think of Lita. He is that good with Wraiths. And Quanro, of course, his aggressive style. He might not even let Lita get the Wraith today. But yeah, this is going to be so exciting. And I have to say, I had kind of planned to talk about this before the game, but I am feeling very fortunate that I can watch this game. I'll tell you why. Because I had dinner today with a blind person, and I've never really met a blind person uh, in my life, which kind of surprises me. I've seen blind people walking around. I've probably talked to them on some occasion in college, I'm thinking. But I'd never really met a blind person. But yes, I had dinner with a blind person, which I thought would be very awkward because pff, I don't know what to do. What do I know? I don't know. Uh, what do I help? What do I help with? What do I not help with? Would it, would it offend the person if I help with this? I didn't know what to do. But it ended up being kind of surprisingly comfortable. Very, very comfortable because I didn't really have to... Uh, use body language with her. I didn't have to use any body language. I could just rely on my voice, which being a commentator was just came very, very naturally to me. I Usually in social situations, I'm not... I'm a pretty shy guy because maybe the body language, I don't know. Because I felt very, very at ease. We had a good time, ate some good food. And of course, uh, this, it did make me feel very, very good about being able to watch these games. Uh, she would not have had the, uh, she wouldn't have been able to do that. I'm not sure if I have any blind subscribers who listen to my commentaries. I highly doubt it. It'd be a very slim chance that would happen because StarCraft is such a niche scene anyway, uh, making an even, even smaller niche out of that, and plus I'm a commentator, 5,000 subscribers, be a smaller niche, so I highly doubt it. Not that I'm saying that uh, people, blind people couldn't enjoy StarCraft games, I don't think that's the case at all. I think uh, listening to my commentaries would probably be uh, akin to listening to sports on the radio or something, even though I'm kind of less play-by-play -play than some of the other commentators, so that might not qu quite work out. But, yes, Alita is walling off with a command center, unusually enough. Uh, just trying to uh, fight back any uh, really early, early uh, zergling rushes or anything for Quandra, which he's not going for this time, thankfully. I want to see some longer games from these two powerhouses. But, yeah, that got me to thinking about... Uh, I don't know if you've seen the game between Boxer and the blind person. Boxer actually played a blind StarCraft player... And it was highly competitive. Uh, they had a deal, they struck a deal at the very beginning of the game that Boxer would wear a blindfold for about three minutes. I think it was three, might have been five minutes. But he, won, he wore the blindfold, did horribly, wasn't able to split his SCVs properly. 
and the blind guy took Boxer the distance. He played Zerg and just did fantastically working with sound the entire game. It was just really, really impressive to watch. Even when Boxer was kind of a jerk and he floated over to the island bases. I mean, the blind guy, he went for drops on the island bases. I don't know how he did this. Working from sound, he knew the map intimately, it seemed. Of course, Boxer ended up winning because uh, I guess the three-minute handicap at the beginning wasn't enough to bring him down. But he was floating buildings all over the place, J just being typical uh, boxer jerkiness there. But I'm sure that the blind person didn't want him to go easy on him, and he certainly didn't, and it still took him the distance. So impressive game. Uh, search for on YouTube for boxer versus blind guy to watch that game. I would highly recommend it. But okay, Lita, is, he still has his command center at the front blocking. So Lita's not going to be able to mine from that for a while. He is pumping SCVs. This is very, very interesting play from Lita. Like I said, we're going to see some weirdness today. Guaranteed. But there is one fire bat there. That's going to keep Quanner on the base a little bit longer. Comes the command center floating off. Quanner sees an opportunity. Not able to utilize anything because two fire bats in the area. But he's going to have to run back to that choke. Quanro. Quanro is so aggressive. He's going to find some way to get in there, into there. Now he comes running by with his zerglings. Breaking into the main, it looks like. But it looks like... Uh, Lita was moving out because he trusted he'd be able to micro his firebat around. He stemmed the firebat, so the firebat's very low in health, not close to the medic. Not sure if this firebat fire is going to survive or not, but it is defending for the meantime as Quanro is throwing down his sunken colonies at the same time. Lita is moving into the natural expansion of Quanro. Let's see if he can break this. Only one sunken colony in here, but there are a backup Zerglings. Oh, this is a highly exciting game already. The Zerglings running by. The Firebats doing a fantastic job ripping through these Zerglings, but not enough Marines to really bring down those sunken. So, a ballsy attack from Lita, but he wasn't able to get that done. Uh, wasn't even able to stay in and hide his marine behind the minerals. I don't think he was completely paying attention. Let his marine attack the sunken a little bit longer. But ex excellent instincts from these guys so far. And Quandro is hiding a base. Quandro hiding a base over at the 9 o'clock position. Uh, this is just going to be bananas. Okay, Quandro is running down with a single Zergling Scout. Oh, he has extra Zerglings in as well. So it looks like he's going to try to harass the natural expansion of Lita for a little while longer as he's getting his Mutalist down to this position. Lita preparing for this. I don't know how these guys multitask like this because they had to pay attention to about three fronts at once to get all the necessary tech up to attack and defend all the different bases. This is insane. But Lita, he does have Medic Marines. He's going to be able to defend against the Mutalists, at least for now. See if he has that plus one attack on those Marines. I have to wait till they uh, observe one of those Marines. Taking down the turret as one SCV trying to build a backup turret. Replacement turret. Let's see if... Uh, oh, man. Quandro is drilling through the Manic Marines. Almost no Manic Marines left. Oh, the last Marine going down. Here comes some reinforcement Marines popping out of the barracks. But I think that Quandro would have been able to take that. I think he would have been able to uh, kill off all of the Manic Marines that were remaining. He might be chickening out a little bit, I'm not sure, but he does have that secret expo over at the 9 o'clock position. This is a very bizarre play from both of these guys. So uh, we're not going to see the standard uh, timings from these guys, that's for sure. We're going to see some weird timings right now, but uh, Lita, he is, does, he is working with a lot of turrets. So it will help him protect against the Mutalist troop. But it looks like Quander is switching into Lurkers at this point. He put down his Hydralist in. So I don't think he's going to pump too many more reinforcement Mutalists. Let's see how he handles this now that he's going to see uh, the amount of turrets. So many turrets in for Lita. Just a wall of turrets to defend this. Yeah. Earlier, I think that Quander would have been able to end this game. But it didn't quite commit all of his Mutalists to that. So... That could end up biting him later in this game. Let's see what happens. Queen's Nest. Oh, this is very rare for Quanro. Almost never see him get the Hive Tech. But he is going to work on Hive Tech. And uh, normally, Quanro is not much of a Defiler guy. He likes to push Ultras uh, through the chokes of all of your bases at once. So if he does go straight for Ultras, he is going to be a force to be reckoned with, especially with all this this other tech out here. He's going to have Lurkers out soon and his Mutalist flying around. 
So this is going to be scary for Lita if he doesn't have enough troops to defend against us. There is a second Bucker coming up, so it looks like he is anticipating an all-in attack with the Lurkers at the front. He might have scanned that Hydralis den earlier, but here come the Lurkers now, morphing for Quanro, pushing the front. 